This is a video on the technology stack behind the Internet of Things. Fundamentally, in the IoT ecosystem, there is the following flow of events. First, there are devices or objects which are providing some service, sending data, or being controlled in some way. The devices communicate to other devices like a mobile phone through wireless communication protocols. In addition to the device communication, there could also be applications that collect data from the devices and analyze the data in order to provide some useful insights. More specifically, the IoT technology stack has the following layers. Devices. These are the objects and devices that are either collecting data or being controlled to take some action, such as setting a temperature on a thermostat through a voice command. Sensors. Some of those objects and devices will have sensors to collect data from the device. For example, an electric toothbrush may have a pressure sensor to detect if too much or too little pressure is being applied to your teeth. Other examples are temperature sensors and water quality sensors. Microcontrollers. Those devices also have electronics that are capable of many operations. This includes collecting and storing the sensor data, establishing wireless connectivity to share the data, or receiving commands to control the devices. Wireless connectivity. Then there are the wireless protocols used by the devices to exchange the data and commands. Software applications. Finally, there are applications that can control the devices, for example, turn on a light, other applications perform an analysis on the data from devices and relate those insights as a form of intelligence. Let's go through each layer one by one. IoT devices could be refrigerators, TVs, cars, light bulbs, fans, anything that could be set up with a wireless connection. Due to the ability to embed electronics into almost anything, it's possible to connect to a vast number of devices. Next, we have sensors. Some IoT devices will use sensors to capture data, such as a sensor in a toothbrush. There are numerous types of sensors available to collect data. Sensors are essential in that the data being collected is the foundation of any derived insights and intelligence. This is a great depiction of what can be learned via sensors from a car and reported back on to provide insights. There are sensors on virtually every system of the car that could be tracked and monitored to provide insights on the car, including when a part needs servicing. Smartphones also have different sensors. Biometric sensors enable fingerprint recognition and eye scanning to unlock a phone or enable payment activation. Sensors can also be used to collect a person's heart rate and oxygen levels in health applications. Sensors can pretty much be embedded in devices and objects used across many industries, including aviation, healthcare, and manufacturing. Sensors can also be put into watches, contact lenses, fabric, and even your body. Sensors could be embedded in most anything where data needs to be collected. The third layer covers the electronics embedded in the devices to connect to the internet, receive commands, collect data, such as the data from the sensors, and communicate data back to the internet. Microcontrollers are tiny CPUs, the heart of any computing system, big or small. Therefore, these devices are like mini computers. Microcontrollers embedded in small devices can't do as much as in a full-blown computing system, However, the very fact that these devices have controllers and electronics to receive input, do processing, and take action, at some fundamental level, this is what a computer does. Amazon Dash buttons are a great example of microelectronics that fit into a very small device, about two inches long. The Dash buttons, when pressed, can initiate an order for a product from Amazon. For example, the image shows an Amazon Dash button on a washing machine. When the button is pressed, an order is automatically placed for laundry detergent. A microphone on this board picks up audio signals used to set up the device with the help of an Amazon mobile application. This setup includes initializing the Wi-Fi connection that the Dash device will use to connect to the internet. Remember, there's no screen to set up the Wi-Fi connection on the device, hence an Amazon mobile app plus the microphone on the Dash button can accomplish this. The button, when pressed, initiates ordering the product from Amazon. There is a Wi-Fi controller that enables connection to the home Wi-Fi network to communicate orders to Amazon. The microcontroller is the computing element coordinating all of the steps and actions needed for the device to work. There is also a battery, not shown here, that is used to power the device. All of this is packed into a board that is about two inches long and one inch wide. The fourth layer is all about wireless connectivity needed to remotely communicate with or control the device, as well as report data to an application that can collect, interpret, and report it. This can be achieved through numerous wireless technologies. 
connectivity is one of the more complex considerations in IoT due to the number of available wireless technologies, each with different characteristics and pros and cons. This table highlights some of the many wireless connectivity technologies. Depending on the use case, the wireless technology to use will vary. Each technology has different capabilities. Bluetooth is used for devices a short distance from one another. Bluetooth is commonly used to connect your phone to your car, where the distance from the phone to car is short. On the other extreme, if you want to browse the internet in a coffee shop from your mobile device or laptop, you could connect to the coffee shop Wi-Fi as Wi-Fi can handle connectivity over larger distances. But there are also a number of newer protocols such as Zigbee, Z-Wave, and Insteon, which like Bluetooth have low power consumption and the amount of data that can be transmitted is small. Wi-Fi is very prevalent and widely available and is able to carry much more data than these other technologies. However, Wi-Fi also requires more power and therefore can also be more costly to use. Cellular networks are also widely available and are important for wireless connectivity and IoT, due in part to its availability and the ranges for connectivity. Telco company Ericsson predicts that cellular networks will comprise 10% of the connectivity technology of IoT devices by 2021. While most communications will happen over Wi-Fi or the low power networks, there will still be times when connecting to these more limited range networks will not be possible and the cellular network is needed for communicating across the Internet of Things. RFID is mentioned here as well. The use for RFID is much more specific, but it's still a way to communicate data between devices. The technology leverages special tags placed on objects that can be easily read and tracked. A good example are the devices used at toll booths such as EasyPass where you install a small box with an RFID tag on your car windshield and this tag can be read as you drive through the toll booth without stopping. RFID technology is used in retail as well to track products. The differences between these wireless technologies include range of connectivity, power consumption, operating radio frequency, reliability, and security. Which wireless technology to use depends on the preferences of the IoT device vendors and the IoT use cases. There is still some competition in the industry as to which technologies are here for the long haul, most notably around the low power technologies including Bluetooth, Zigbee, and Z-Wave. There is overlap amongst these protocols in terms of capability. Not all devices are supported by each protocol, so this can lead to issues around interoperability of devices, especially with smart home devices. With the use of IoT for home automation, there is sometimes a need for a smart hub. A hub is needed when devices can't connect to the internet. This is the case, for example, with some of the wireless technologies like Zigbee and Z-Wave. The hub, in effect, acts as a translator communicating between the Wi-Fi network and the wireless technologies like Zigbee that connect to the devices. This is needed to enable the use of your phone to control the devices as your phone would leverage the Wi-Fi to communicate commands out. The hub then interprets those commands and communicates with the devices. But enter the introduction of Bluetooth Low Energy where a hub is not needed, as both devices and phone can communicate directly. Again, this is part of what makes setting up a smart home confusing. Sometimes you need a hub and sometimes you don't. It depends on the intent and goals of the system and capabilities from manufacturers of the IoT devices. Voice devices like Amazon Echo and Google Home also act as a hub, providing a central way to issue your voice commands across devices. Hubs can make it easier to schedule and automate tasks over a wide variety of devices, providing a more organized approach to managing devices. The fourth layer refers to applications that collect the data and derive insights from the data. The applications include mobile apps on the smartphones that control devices, as well as applications to receive and process the data to drive analytics and insights. The applications could be mobile apps that enable you to control your smart home devices. A mobile application or a website page can be used to monitor and control devices. These are some examples of consumer-facing applications. The applications also include ones that collect and analyze data to make insights. This screen shows data collected for a farming application showing things like air quality and soil conditions, which in turn could automatically trigger irrigation changes. Other examples include automotive applications. For example, sensors in the car could collect data that an application could use to predict unusual behavior and then recommend maintenance. The car data could be shown on an application running on a mobile device. Another example is an application that could be used by a customer support team to troubleshoot a remote device. 
In an industrial IoT use case, there may be applications to monitor the health of city infrastructure, collecting data over time, and making predictions of when a problem may arise. These types of applications are predictive in nature, leveraging data, analyzing patterns, and could have a substantial impact on safety. As such, it's important to consider that IoT is not simply about turning on electronics at home or offering consumer experiences. There is far more reaching impact as well. To summarize, IoT has the following components in the stack. Devices that are objects to collect data or perform an action, sensors on the devices to collect data, additional microelectronics including microcontrollers, also part of the hardware on the devices, Note that the sensors and electronics can be very small and therefore fit onto a small amount of space on the device. Then we have wireless connectivity to carry data and then the applications to control devices as well as collect data and provide insightful reports. That's a wrap up on the IoT technology stack.